Have you ever felt like you're different from those around you? Have you wondered why you find yourself alone without friends or a relationship? In Islam, there is a special group of people often referred to as the Chosen Ones. These individuals, blessed with unique qualities and spiritual insights, frequently find themselves walking a solitary path. But why is this the case? Reflecting on this, it becomes clear that our solitude is not a sign of weakness or misfortune, but rather a profound indication of our unique purpose and divine connection. Today I will discuss seven reasons why we, the Chosen Ones, often find ourselves alone. These reasons are deeply rooted in Islamic teachings and provide a lens through which to understand this solitude. Number one, our strong connection with Allah. Do you ever feel misunderstood by those around you because of your deep faith? How do you handle such situations? This is a common experience for many chosen ones. Firstly, one of the main reasons chosen ones are often alone is our strong connection with Allah. The Quran states, and I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. This deep devotion to Allah often means we prioritize our relationship with Him over worldly connections. As a result, it can sometimes be challenging to find others who share the same level of commitment to their faith. This connection with Allah brings us immense peace and contentment, emotions that we may not always find in human relationships. Our solitude is therefore not a burden, but a testament to our unwavering faith and dedication to worship. Additionally, this deep spiritual connection emits a unique frequency that others can sense, often leading to an unconscious distance from those who can't match our vibrational energy. Consider the story of Prophet Ibrahim, A.S. His unwavering faith in Allah set him apart from his people, leading him to stand alone against idolatry. His solitude was not a sign of weakness, but a reflection of his profound connection with the Divine. This example illustrates how a strong bond with Allah can lead to isolation, yet also brings unparalleled inner peace and strength. Number two, our higher moral standards. Have you ever felt isolated because you chose to stand by your values? What helped you stay strong? Such feelings of isolation are often a result of our commitment to higher moral standards. Another reason for our solitude lies in our higher moral and ethical standards. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, the best of you are those who have the best manners and character. Our commitment to living a life of integrity and righteousness can make it challenging to connect with others who may not share the same values. Our pursuit of excellence in character often leads us to distance ourselves from environments and relationships that could compromise our principles. This dedication to maintaining our moral integrity can result in solitude but it also fosters a sense of inner strength and clarity. Moreover, our light and authenticity can intimidate those who are not living in truth, causing them to shy away from forming deeper connections. Take the example of Imam Malik, who stood firm on his principles despite facing persecution. His dedication to truth and justice often left him isolated, yet he remained steadfast showing that true commitment to one's values often comes with solitude. This demonstrates how maintaining high moral standards can lead to isolation, but also fosters a sense of inner strength and clarity. So, our commitment to higher moral standards often isolates us, but it also builds our inner strength and clarity. Just as our moral standards set us apart, our intolerance for superficial relationships further contributes to our solitude. Number three, our intolerance for superficial relationships. Do you find it difficult to connect with others on a deeper level? How do you navigate superficial social environments? For chosen ones, superficial connections can feel particularly unfulfilling. 
In addition to our high moral standards, we also have an intolerance for superficial relationships. We seek deep, meaningful connections that go beyond surface-level interactions. The Quran advises, and keep yourself patiently with those who call on their Lord morning and afternoon, seeking His pleasure. This quest for genuine connections often results in fewer but more profound relationships. Our selective approach to relationships is not a sign of arrogance, but rather a desire for authenticity and depth. Our solitude highlights our preference for quality over quantity in our social interactions. The presence of superficiality can be draining for us as we thrive on meaningful, soul-enriching engagements. Our intolerance for superficial relationships ensures we seek authenticity and depth in our connections, which naturally leads to fewer but more meaningful relationships. Number 4. Our focus on self-improvement. Have you ever chosen solitude to focus on personal growth? What benefits did you experience? Many chosen ones find that solitude provides the perfect environment for self-improvement. Moreover, our focus on self-improvement and personal growth often contributes to our solitary path. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer, while there is good in both. Strive for that which will benefit you, seek the help of Allah, and do not feel helpless. We constantly strive to better ourselves spiritually, mentally, and physically. This focus on self-improvement often requires solitude and reflection, making it difficult to maintain a busy social life. Our solitude is a sign of our commitment to continuous personal development. Additionally, this period of solitude allows us to heal from past wounds and traumas, turning our pain into wisdom and strength. It is during this time that we prepare ourselves for future relationships that truly resonate with our essence. The life of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani is a testament to this. He spent years in the wilderness focusing on self-purification and spiritual growth before returning to society to share his wisdom. This example demonstrates how a focus on self-improvement can lead to isolation, yet also results in profound personal and spiritual growth. Number 5. Our sensitivity to negative energy. Do you find yourself withdrawing from negative environments? How do you protect your peace? Chosen ones often find that they are particularly sensitive to the energy around them. Additionally, chosen ones are highly sensitive to negative energy and toxic environments. The Quran states, O you who have believed, fear Allah and be with those who are true. We instinctively avoid negativity and seek out environments that foster positivity and spiritual growth. This sensitivity often leads us to distance ourselves from negative influences and relationships that drain our energy. Our solitude is a reflection of our desire to protect our inner peace and well-being. This heightened sensitivity to energies allows us to maintain our spiritual and emotional health, purity and focus on our divine mission. Reflect on the story of Prophet Yusuf Amaes, who maintained his purity and faith despite being surrounded by negative influences in Egypt. His ability to stay true to his values, even in isolation, is a powerful example. This shows how sensitivity to negative energy can lead to solitude, yet also helps maintain spiritual integrity and inner peace. Number 6. Our Divine Mission Do you feel called to a higher purpose that sets you apart? This sense of calling, this divine mission, often brings with it a profound sense of responsibility and direction. For many chosen ones, this higher purpose is a guiding light that shapes their actions and decisions. It is a compelling force that requires deep commitment and focus, often demanding that they walk a path less traveled. In Islam, the concept of having a divine mission is deeply rooted in the faith. The Quran states, and I have chosen you, 
so listen to what is revealed. This powerful verse speaks to the heart of those who feel set apart for a unique role. It emphasizes that being chosen by Allah means adhering to His guidance and fulfilling the specific purpose He has designated. This sense of divine selection often necessitates periods of solitude where one can connect more deeply with Allah and gain clarity on their mission. Solitude, in this context, is not loneliness, but a sacred space for reflection, prayer and preparation. It allows the chosen ones to detach from worldly distractions and focus entirely on their spiritual journey. This solitude is essential for aligning oneself with the divine purpose and ensuring that one's actions are in harmony with this higher calling. It provides the freedom to pursue their mission without the noise and interference of everyday life. Consider the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, whose experiences underscore the importance of solitude in fulfilling a divine mission. His time spent in the cave of Hira, away from societal distractions, was pivotal. It was in this isolation that he received the first revelation, marking the beginning of his prophetic mission. This period of solitude was crucial for his spiritual preparation and alignment with the divine purpose. It illustrates how stepping away from the world can lead to profound insights and readiness for the responsibilities ahead. Furthermore, this divine mission often involves significant personal sacrifice and a willingness to endure solitude. The chosen ones understand that their path, though solitary at times, is necessary for fulfilling their unique role in the grand scheme of things. The universe, through these periods of isolation, prepares them by aligning their true essence with their life purpose. This preparation ensures that when they step into their role, they do so with clarity, strength and unwavering faith. Our divine mission, therefore, is not just a calling, but a journey that requires dedication and preparation. Solitude becomes a powerful tool in this journey, helping us to stay focused and connected to our higher purpose. It allows us to hear the whispers of divine guidance, to recharge our spiritual energy and to emerge stronger and more resolute in our mission. This solitude is not a burden, but a blessing, a testament to our commitment to our divine calling and our readiness to fulfill it. Number seven, our inner peace. Do you find solace in solitude? How does it help you connect with your faith? Many chosen ones find that solitude is a source of great inner peace and spiritual rejuvenation. In a world filled with distractions and noise, the practice of seeking solitude can be a profound way to reconnect with oneself and with Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, frequently sought solitude for reflection and prayer, exemplifying the importance of quiet moments away from the hustle and bustle of daily life. This practice is not merely an escape, but a deliberate retreat into the depths of one's soul to find clarity and purpose. Solitude allows us to step back from our routines and social obligations, giving us the space to reflect on our spiritual journey and our relationship with Allah. This inner peace is a gift that allows us to navigate life with tranquility and resilience. It provides an opportunity to listen to our inner voice and to the subtle whispers of guidance from Allah. In solitude, we find the strength to face challenges and the serenity to accept the things we cannot change. Our solitude is not a burden, but a source of strength and serenity. It enables us to connect more deeply with Allah and to remain steadfast in our faith. When we are alone, we can engage in deep, uninterrupted prayer and contemplation which strengthens our spiritual resolve and enhances our understanding of divine wisdom. This solitary journey is an opportunity for self-discovery and spiritual evolution, turning our loneliness into a powerful growth tool that prepares us for relationships that truly resonate with our soul. Consider the example of the Sahaba who would often retreat for periods of solitude and worship. They found inner peace and strength in their devotion, away from the distractions of their communities. This practice was not only 
about seeking personal peace, but also about preparing themselves to serve their community better and to uphold their faith with greater conviction. Their example shows how solitude can lead to inner peace and spiritual strength, preparing us for deeper connections in the future. Our inner peace found in solitude strengthens our connection with Allah and prepares us for meaningful relationships. When we are at peace with ourselves and firmly rooted in our faith, we attract relationships that are aligned with our spiritual values and goals. Solitude helps us to cultivate patience, humility and empathy, which are essential qualities for maintaining healthy and fulfilling relationships. In conclusion, solitude is a powerful tool for spiritual growth and inner peace. It is a time for reflection, prayer and reconnecting with our true selves and with Allah. By embracing solitude, we can find the strength and serenity needed to navigate life's challenges and to build relationships that truly resonate with our soul. So, the next time you feel the need to retreat into solitude, embrace it as an opportunity for spiritual renewal and personal growth. If you want this video to reach more Muslim men and women, spread the word and share it with others. I appreciate your efforts. Until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. Don't miss out on this essential knowledge. Stay tuned and stay blessed.